Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer, and this is The Outer Wilds, an open solar system exploration game where we are stuck in a time loop with a supernova as a cherry on top. To find out why we are in a time loop, we trace the events of an ancient species, the Nomai. They invented statues, connected to black holes in order to find something called the Eye of the Universe. They then sent out a probe and planned to blow up the sun to use its resulting power and send the probe's data back in time another 22 minutes. Except the power source failed and all of the Nomai we have found so far have been skeletons. Today, we will chase the Nomai to the interloper and visit the quantum towers to see if we can land on the quantum moon. Before we head straight to the interloper, we can go to Ember Twin's gravity cannon. Here, we are able to recall a Nomai shuttle that has landed on the interloper. I think this vessel is what the game designers wanted us to find first in this mystery. Here at the gravity cannon, we can see the famous tube and ball interface the Nomai loves so much. Moving the ball to the right, the shuttle uses its warp cores to return home. The shuttle was covered with ice, and using the left tube, we are able to launch the shuttle back out into space. Recalling it again, we can use the gravity well to enter the ship, and we are greeted by a dead Nomai named Clary. When the Nomai landed at the interloper, they recorded a conversation. Shortly after the interloper arrived in the solar system, Clary, Poke, and Pi were dispatched to explore it. The shuttle equipment is picking up strange readings below the surface of the interloper. Poke and Pi found a way into the comet through crevices on its sunward side. They def descend through the crust, and we learn here Clary feels for her sister's life as well as Pi's, as they've been gone for a long time. The communications have been lost, and Clary debates going to look for her companions. She decides not to break protocol and stays to keep the shuttle warm. She ends the recording with wishes of well-being to her sister and friend down below. Armed with this knowledge, we can fly to the interloper, which is an icy comet with a highly eccentric orbit around the sun. It gets so close to the sun, when the sun starts to expand while it's going supernova, the interloper gets eaten. The interloper entered our solar system after the Nomai finished the Ash Twin project but I can't pin down an exact time. Make sure to fly past the sun before engaging your autopilot, unless you want to try your hand at extreme marshmallow roasting. Though we need to go to the sunward side, if we land on the comet's tail, we find a recording. It tells us it's so cold here, the Nomai shuttle was being encased in ice. Pie and Poke ask Clary to stay behind while they search for the source of the energy reading. After reading the recording, we can head to the sunward side of the comet. Hopping in some crevices to wait for the ice to melt, we can stare up at the planets. Once the sun does its job, we can start to make our way to the core. Inside, there are many tunnels melted throughout the ice. Our probe tells us there is ghost matter nearby. Shooting our probe into a tunnel close by tells us not to go right. So heading to the left, we find four passageways along with a Know My Recording device. Now familiar Pi is picking up very high energy readings now they are beneath the crust. They deduce the energy reading must come from the core, and may just be dangerous. Pi calls back to Clary to see if they are still connected. Clary responds, but says the voices are faint. If they go any deeper, she is afraid they'd lose the connection altogether. Poke bravely tells Clary to keep the shuttle warm for them, since they will be back as soon as they find the source of the energy readings. Clary ends the conversation with a word of caution. To follow our ghostly friends, we can head down the path to the left. We will slide down through a bit of ghost matter, but not enough to kill us. Coming to a stop, we see a huge hole riddled with ghost matter. Our only option is up. Jumping up to another level, we see a wide hole which we can slide down. Trying to go slow, because we have to navigate through invisible instant cryo death. You know, another Friday. This leads us to another big deadly hole, and our only way forward is up. But this time, we find a dead Nomai laying next to a crack in the ice. Falling through the crack, zero G takes place, as we are inside what's pulling everything down. As we fall, a giant 
stone with crystals sticking out of it encompasses our view. And we see another Nomai. The Nomai here recorded their conversation, giving us insight into what happened here. Poke says, when they found this stone, it was spherical. But the stone wasn't what was causing the energy readings. There was something encased in the stone that was giving off high readings. Pi mentions the casing is effectively muting the readings. They should be at least 10 times higher. They start to realize whatever this is would most likely kill them if they came into contact with it. Whoever put whatever this is inside the casing must have done so to protect themselves, because they mention without that casing, they'd be dead already. Not only that, but whatever is inside is incredibly unstable and under tons of pressure. Poke did a density scan, and the object is so tightly packed, she said she's never seen anything like it before. The two Nomai start to realize the seriousness of the situation. If something so compact were to explode, it wouldn't only kill them, but blanket the entire solar system. And as the comet is approaching the sun, the energy readings are rising. Pi orders Poke to return to the shuttle and roar the rest of the Nomai as quickly as possible. Every second counts. Even taking her gear would slow her down. This kind of confuses Poke. Surely, Pi should come along. But Pi is a scientist through and through. Anything they can learn about the alien matter may help the other Nomai survive the impending explosion. Again, Pi orders Poke to leave immediately. This time, she takes the advice. Poke must be the Nomai we found just outside the core. They didn't make it very far. Looking at the corpse, we see crystals growing out of them. Pi is the one who stayed back by the stone's stone casing. The casing gave way as it got close enough to the sun. The ghost matter inside explodes and spreads in every direction. It coated every inch of the solar system, killing everything it touches. All of the Nomai we have seen succumbed to this sudden, unpredictable event. After following their footsteps for so long, it's sad to see they died in such a horrible way. And some in quite a noble way. Now, Poke, Pi, Clary, Phlox, and the rest of the Nomai now live through us. The Harthians got evolutionarily lucky. When the interloper exploded, the Harthians were just aquatic beings mere tadpoles, and the water nullifies the effects of ghost matter. That's why we only see aquatic life throughout the solar system. As I mentioned before, the Nomai spent their entire time in this solar system studying the wandering moon, known as the Quantum Moon. This became very important to them very quickly. Ultimately, it was a spiritual journey for the Nomai. Now carrying their torches, it only feels right to make the trip ourselves. The only problem is, when you try to land on the quantum moon, the darn thing disappears. The moon is liable to teleport to another orbit around a different planet whenever we take our eye off of it. To figure this out, we will visit the Tower of Quantum Trials, the Tower of Quantum Knowledge, and some Rinky Dink Cave. I guess we can head to the cave first. To find quantum objects in our solar system, we can use our signal scope. The particular signal we are looking for lays on Ember Twin, next to Rebik's camp. Entering the cave, we see a scroll wall. A few Nomai were down here exploring, when a Nomai named Coleus disappeared. The others are at a loss for what could have happened, and are scared for their friend. But we've been through the ringer. We can figure out what's going on here. Turning around, a giant quantum shard appears out of nowhere. On a hunch, we hop on top of it and turn off our flashlight. Turning it back on, we see we are now in a new location, a new cave, and luckily, we find signs of Coleus here. Coleus soon realized what happened here, and uses a stone to get back to the other Nomai. The other Nomai returned to explain this phenomenon. They dubbed this a new quantum role that states, when an object is in contact with a quantum object, and ceases to be observed, it entangles with the quantum object. This allows us to use them to travel as they teleport to other locations. Using this role, we can get out of here. From here, we will head to Brittle Hollow to visit the Tower of Quantum Knowledge. Landing on the tower, we can head down the stairs, but the gravity pathways leading up the tower are busted, 
and we can't use our jetpack or ship to fly there. But knowing the tricks of Brittle Hollow, we can fire our probe through the roof. It tells us the surface integrity. We just have to wait until it hits zero, so we just wait. Finally, the Devil's Lantern does its job and bombards the tower. The integrity of the surface snaps and the tower plummets through the black hole. We chase the tower into the black hole, and as we fall with our ship, somehow, we end up in it. As we emerge from the white hole, we can use our probe to track down the tower. Taking advantage of zero G, we can fly up to the tower and ascend to its first floor. The first floor is kind of strange. There is a slot for a projection stone here, but I turned this place upside down and I couldn't find a projection stone anywhere. The only thing on the second floor is a scroll wall or a scroll on a shelf. We can take it and head up. The top floor is what we came here for. There are two scroll walls here and one is empty. Above us, a quantum moon locator does its job. Plugging in the scroll, we actually find a really nice speech, but it's a bit long so I will shorten it a bit to save time. If you are preparing to make your first journey to the quantum moon, you're almost ready for this deeply significant trip. Before you go, pause to remember your history. We make the journey not only for us, but those before us. For the two groups of Nomai, who while separate, both looked up and were inspired by the same moon. It was this moon that kept their curiosity alive during the hard time following their crash. When the two groups reunited, it became their combined goal to get there. It took time, and many Nomai who wished to make the journey never got to go. When you reach the moon, remember these Nomai. The other scroll wall tells us to expect a quantum shrine on the moon. To reach the moon's sacred sixth location, we will have to travel to the moon's north pole and use this shrine. With another quantum roll in hand, we can make our way to another tower on Giant's Deep. Within the enormous tornado on Giant's Deep, lays an equally enormous tower. After finding the tornado, we can fly up and over the vortex. Once back through the atmosphere, we can land and climb the tower. We are met with a message of welcome and instructions to ascend the grav well. It's exceptionally tall. Once we exit the well, we see another message, telling us to enter without friends. These are lessons to learn alone. To enter the tower, we have to fall down a small hole below an archway. We fall into a small room and are met with another message that tells us to enter the wandering archway. Remembering the cave with the quantum stone, we keep an eye on it so it stays put. The next floor only holds a quantum shard, but the room below that holds a puzzle. And a message from the Nomai. It reads, Observing an image of an angel, uh, I, mean, I mean, a quantum object, is the same as observing the object itself. But the goal of the puzzle is to get to the wandering archway. But the hallways here are set up to force you to lose sight of the archway, prompting it to teleport. In order to make our way to it, we use our newfound knowledge. Using our scout, we take a picture of the archway, forcing it to stay in place. We are asked to do this a few more times with increasing difficulty, but the method is the same. Falling through the final archway leads us to a room with a scroll wall. On the wall was a painting of two Nomai, who are both pointing to a symbol of the quantum moon. The scroll wall simply offers us congratulations, if we have learned the rule of quantum imaging. With this, we are ready to visit the quantum moon. Resetting the loop to make sure we don't get interrupted, we can prepare ourselves for the journey to the quantum moon. Since it doesn't have a set location, we have to scan the solar system with our signal scope. Once we pick up the signal, we can get our journey underway. With the three rolls in mind, we are ready to land. Once we get close enough to the moon, we fire our probe to get a picture from the scout to lock it in place. Making sure not to use our landing camera, we can come in slowly for a landing. Almost as soon as we get through the atmosphere, it gets confusing. This place looks really similar to Dark Bramble. The Nomai learned that the quantum moon takes on the properties of the body it's orbiting. The moon would look totally different if it was orbiting Timber Hearth rather than Dark Bramble. The first thing this moon greets us with is a dead Nomai. It serves as a great reminder. We made this trip for them, and we still have stuff to do. But we will save that for the next episode. 
In this episode, we finally uncovered the fate of our ancient friends, the Nomai. They were all killed instantly, when a stone containing ghost matter ruptured, coating the sub solar system in a deadly manner. We also learned the quantum roles in order to make the deeply spiritual trip many Nomai have made before us, and use those roles to touch down on the Wandering Moon. If there is one thing about this game I appreciate, it's the more information you learn, the more confusing it gets, just serving to spur you on more. But for now, this is the Lore Explorer, diving deep into the story so you don't have to.